The itsy bitsy spider did indeed climb down the water spout, but what if our eight legged friend and then all of his other eight legged friends too, in perfect synchronicity, got washed down that proverbial water spout together and disappeared entirely from our fair planet that we call Earth? For some of you, it'll be good riddance. You hate spiders, particularly house spiders that randomly emerge from behind the sofa and terrify you to the point that you'd rather burn your own house down. For others, it'll be the saddest thing ever. You love spiders, they're cute, googly little eyes, they're furry little legs. Wait, what? Spiders are cute? And let's find out how terrible our world would be without them. Hello internet, what's going on? And once again, welcome back to the most inquisitive channel on YouTube, Life's Biggest Questions. As per usual, I'll be your listening body phone voice, Jack Finch, as today we curiously ask the question, what if spiders went extinct? Roll the clip. For the curious amongst you, that clip was from 2002's Eight-Legged Freaks, which is an awesome movie nonetheless, and you might be thinking, hey, that's the complete opposite to this video title. How the hell am I meant to be visually immersed with a video clip of giant spiders being blasted to death with a shotgun? And yeah, I agree, but come on guys, this is a video about spiders. It doesn't matter if they're giant, right? But I'd say, regardless, this topic is a far more serious matter than an early 2000s horror comedy, so... I guess we should jump into it, shall we? On the surface, the initial answer to this question is very simple. If all of the spiders on Earth went extinct, it would be a very, very bad thing. As in, it would be so terrible that our planet would face immediate repercussions that could eventually lead to the extinction of our civilization. And you might think, Really? A spider's really that big of a deal? They're just like creeping and crawling around in corners and spinning webs, right? And whilst that's partially true, spiders are also incredible and an integral part of our ecosystem. Let me explain. Spiders are the most dominant terrestrial predators on the entire planet. In fact, there are more individual spiders and spider species than in any other group of predators. Ever. And not only that, spiders are so damn efficient at gobbling up insects that the spark of all human civilization, agriculture, is an integral part as to how and why our relationship with spiders has become so important. There are more than 45,000 known varieties of spider, and all of those arachnids do a pretty stand-up job at spinning webs and eating insects. Such a good job, in fact, that a single spider can consume more than 2,000 insects each year. Now, if that doesn't seem like a lot, put it this way, a single acre of farmland can contain up to a million spiders. For all of those spiders to be thriving and surviving, that's a hell of a lot of insects for them all to be chowing down on, and those insects would otherwise be eating all of our crops. You can see where this is going, right? As in, the food that sustains us all on a global scale, that without spiders around to be the valiant guardians of our agricultural systems, would quickly blight and be corrupted or be eaten outright, and the entire food system that our global community relies on would collapse in a matter of months. And again, yeah, you can start to see why spiders are a pretty big deal, right? If the spider population disappeared from our planet, our delicate food ecosystem would collapse and humanity would have to very quickly discover a technological alternative to maintaining the insect population. Millions upon millions of humans would face famine and subsequent extinction. Spiders are a pretty big deal. Without them, the science is crystal clear that insect populations would balloon to an astonishing amount. Put it this way, for each person on Earth, there are 17 million flies, and that results in a number so big that I can't really pronounce it. So yeah, there's a lot of them, and with a blossoming population, the birth rate would only become exponential. Things would get much worse before they got better, and although that's not to say that our ecosystem wouldn't eventually stabilize, the subsequent human cost would be unprecedented. Not only would these new swarms of insects destroy all of our agricultural systems, they'd also spread terrible disease at an alarming rate, a modicum which spiders have traditionally served to mediate. If you think malaria has been bad in the past, it would be devastating without spiders around to control the mosquito population, and very rapidly other such diseases will become as widespread as the common cold. Again, millions upon millions of human beings would face extinction without our spider friends to keep a lid on things. Yeah, it's not looking so good, is it? But there's also the fact that we're still yet to learn so much from spiders, and with them dead and gone, our civilization may have missed a critical 
technological opportunity. One of those opportunities is the myriad of chemical compounds that are contained in a spider's venom. The venom of just one single species of spider contains hundreds, perhaps even thousands of different chemical compounds. Now, we know that they exist, but what we don't know yet is how useful they may be to human civilization. However, the compounds that we have discovered so far are the product of some of the most exciting breakthroughs in technology. So far, spider venom is being used to test the chemical compounds that affect areas that range from critical illnesses to military grade technology. The venom of the Australian funnel web spider has been used to test pain control medications, it's been used to heal muscular dystrophy, and it's even been used in clinical trials to help identify brain tumors. Spider venom is absolutely insane, and the potential uses toward the human endeavor are staggering. And it doesn't just stop at venom either, but the compounds of spider silk are a potential revolutionary breakthrough in materials. If you didn't know, spider silk actually has a higher strength to density ratio than steel. And the most cutting edge research is making waves in areas ranging from aerospace design to bulletproof vest, surgical threads, and the treatment of wounds, and even prosthetic limbs. If spiders suddenly became extinct, all of this cutting edge research and the potential infinite pool of spider venom chemical compounds would be gone and lost forever. Just think of all the awesome Spider-Man technology we could have developed. Guys, we could be web slingers one day. It's possible. So if all of this isn't reason enough already, and if you haven't yet got the bigger picture, the next time you see a house spider chilling in the corner of your room, spinning its web, setting up its new home, ready to eat all of those pesky flies and keep them from buzzing at you at night, please don't kill it. Say, Thanks, buddy. Thanks for choosing to protect me. Let's continue our friendship like we have since the dawn of human civilization. Great job. Well, there we have it, the long and short answer to the question, what if spiders went extinct? It would be really, really bad, and please let's hope that it never happens. What do you guys think? Do you agree, disagree? Have any more to add to this particular notion? Let us know your thoughts down in the comment section below, as well as any intriguing insights that you may have to offer. Before we depart from today's video, let's first take a quick look at some of your more creative comments from over the past few days. First up, Mr. Gamer Guy says, who else is watching this with no socks? Uh, <laughs> safety first, man. Didn't you hear? Wear shoes in the house. You madman, but yeah, you do you, I suppose. And finally, junior researcher Barrett says, no matter how many times I hit the thumbs up, I still am not a deer. This is starting to bother me, Jack. Why do you even want me to be a deer? Um, well, I have no idea what you're talking about. <sighs> oh my word, that was terrible. I'm so sorry. Anyway, on that note, unfortunately, that's all we've got time for in today's video. Just stick around all the way until the end. If you were a fan of this video or just likes biggest questions in general, then please be a doe and hit that thumbs up button as well as that subscribe bell. And I'll be seeing you in the next one. As per usual, I've been your disappointed floating voice, Jack Finch. You've been watching life's biggest questions. And until next time, please, you take it easy.